Let's talk about something called light logic. Uh, imagine I'm looking at a sphere. That is lit slightly from the top, slightly from the front. Light direction that looks something like this. If the light is coming at the sphere at this angle, the light break, the separation between shadows and lights, is going to start at the sides here and here, perpendicular to the angle of the light source. And then, depending on the direction of the light source, it's going to start here and here, and then curve this way. So here's our light break. And then on this side, you're going to have something called a body shadow. And then the sphere is also going to cast a shadow onto the table. It's going to look something like this. <clears throat> okay. This is called a cast shadow. Body shadows have three properties that make them look like body shadows. One, two, and three. Cast shadows also have three properties that make them look like cast shadows. Let's talk about the body shadow first. On round objects, body shadows have a soft transition. So when I'm shading the body shadow, I want to make sure that the transition between my shadows and lights is gradual, is soft. Because the form is gradually turning away from light source and we're seeing less and less and less light. So the first property of body shadows is that they have a fuzzy edge. That they're fuzzy. Next really important property of body shadows is that there usually is a darker value that runs along the shape of the light break. It's thin. It's also fuzzy. It goes a little bit darker. And that property is called a core shadow. Property number three is that there's usually a lighter value, particularly where the sphere is close to the floor, where light is reflecting from the table back into the shadow and creating a slightly lighter value. So usually, the lightest part of the shadow is going to be right about here, but also along the edge of the shadow here. That's called a reflected light. So in order for a body shadow to appear like a body shadow, to appear three-dimensional, to look like it's sitting on a three-dimensional object, it needs to hit these three properties. Fuzzy edge, got it. Core shadow, got it. Reflected light, got it. Okay, now let's discuss cast shadows. Cast shadows, depending on the light source, but in most cases when you're dealing with really strong incandescent artificial light, are going to be sharp. So if you look at the edge of the cast shadow, it's going to be significantly sharper than the edge of the body shadow. So the first property of cast shadows is that they are sharp. But as the cast shadow gets longer, as it moves away from the casting object, the edge is going to start to diffuse slightly. It's strongly dependent on the quality of the light source, but again, when you're dealing with incandescent light, the edge of the cast shadow is going to soften as it moves away from the casting object. So, second property of cast shadows is that they get softer. Okay. 
third property is that the cast shadow is going to be darker at the point of origin. Darkest where the sphere is hitting the table and then little by little getting a little bit lighter as it moves away. So third property of cast shadows is that they get lighter. So once again, in order for a cast shadow to feel like a cast shadow, to look like a cast shadow, it needs to check off these three properties. If the cast shadow has a sharp edge all the way around, if there's no value transition from where it starts to where it ends, it's going to stop looking like a cast shadow and turn into some kind of tunnel. That's something to watch out for. Okay, now let's talk about the lighter part of the sphere. That's simply called the light. The light also has three properties. First property is that you're going to have a highlight. That's going to be right about here. That's going to be our brightest value. Then off the highlight, you're going to have a slightly darker value, which is simply called the light. Now, the light is not all one value. You're going to have an area where the sphere is most directly facing the light source, which is called the lightest light. And then starting from the lightest light, going towards the shadow, it's going to get a little bit darker. So this way, this way, this way, it's going to darken ever so slightly. Okay. Until it gets to the edge of the shadow and turns to something called halftone. So you're going to have a little bit of halftone here, a little bit of halftone here, like this. And halftone really belongs neither to the shadow nor the light. It's an intermediate area in between. Okay. So once again, in order for the light to feel three-dimensional, in order for this part of the sphere to feel like it's 3D, it needs to check off these three properties. Understanding light logic is very, very important, not just when rendering spheres, but when we start dealing with more complex shapes. Uh, if you don't understand what's happening in terms of light logic, all you're going to see is a patchwork of light and dark, and you're going to get it wrong. You're going to miss the properties. Sometimes they're really subtle. Sometimes you're dealing with textured objects, objects where the light break isn't quite visible, where the body shadow, core shadow reflected aren't quite visible. You have to understand what you're looking for in order to find it. So um, we're going to move from here to actually rendering a sphere from real life. That's going to be in the next tutorial.